Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I want to try to get GPredict, which is a satellite tracking software, installed on an older Raspberry Pi 3. Stick around. Alright everyone, here we are logged into the Raspberry Pi using VNC Viewer. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 running the Raspbian operating system and it's a 32-bit operating system. I am wanting to install GPredict so that in the future I can use it to track amateur radio satellites. So let's get started. All right, first we want to open up a terminal window and get it big enough to see. Control, Shift, and plus, 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 plus. That'll increase the size of the terminal window. Now, I should tell you that uh, I have already went through and done all the upfront configurations, such as expanding the file system, uh, setting the time zones, uh, connecting to my Wi-Fi, as well as doing a update and an upgrade. Uh, the update and upgrade should be done on a regularly periodic time, such as maybe once a week or once a month. Generally, if I want to install a piece of software, I will do it just before I install the software so that it makes my repositories to be, it makes sure that they are are up to date and the repositories are the 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 list that it keeps inside the Raspberry Pi of what software is out there and available to to install so today I want to use a package manager instead of going to the website and downloading the tar file and doing the full compile configure and so forth that way uh, this would should make it a little bit easier uh, this does not come pre-installed on the Raspbian system so if you type in sudo sudo however you want to pronounce it apt dash git install synaptic now Synaptic is the package manager software that will do all of the installing of which software you're wanting as well as any dependencies that may be needed. So once you get this typed in, let's hit enter. And you can see it's reading package list, dependencies, telling, telling us that uh, reading the database, unpacking and processing the triggers. All right, it says that it is installed, so let's check. Sometimes it does not show up. Oh, there it is. It Sometimes it does not show up uh, without a reboot. So let's uh, close out the terminal window. We'll come to here, Preferences, Synaptic Package Manager. Now it's going to ask you for your username and password. I have not changed it on this one, so it's Raspberry and enter. It takes it just a little bit to load up and like I said this is a Raspberry Pi 3 so you know, it may take just a little bit longer than um, uh, a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, over here you can see on the left hand side all the categories of software. Uh, several of the little tabs here that you could explore but I'm going to take the easy way today. I'm going to hit this search function G predict and hit search and we'll see what comes up like I said it's it's slow thinking and it'll it'll get there the progress bar on the bottom is up oh, there it is right there all right we want to select this box mark for installation now I will tell you that I had this installed previously and uninstalled it so when you hit mark for installation 
if it's the first time the software has been installed there's a possibility there is a window that'll pop up and says it's going to install these other pieces of software as dependencies uh, that is quite normal so we've already got the gpredict selected and let's hit apply before we do that let's cancel let's cancel that we'll scroll this up a little bit you can get change logs screenshots uh, some of the co uh, core features with the list here as well as the home page for the software so let's uh, double check that 2.3-33 is actually the latest version so let's just click uh, visit home page all right so you see it opened the the web browser up we will go to the download uh, all right github all right this is showing 2.2.1 as the latest 2.3 2.2 so it looks like that um, synaptic package manager has one that's newer than on um, github let's go ahead and hit apply all right it shows you is to be installed as well as uh, if if the other window pops up with your dependencies as it calls it it should list them down here too so let's go ahead and hit apply on that uh, it's installing the software it's unpackaging it installed for arm hf and changes have been applied hit close and it's going to think about it here for just a few minutes and or seconds rather because of the the age of the the raspberry pi that i'm using i'm using a three just to show that it will run on the older two and threes i do have some raspberry pi twos here but i've got them preoccupied with other projects you see the green box here shows that it is installed so let's close this out and there's nothing you just have to go through education is g predict internet is g predict so either one of those should work now here's satellites and like i said i have had this installed before and it shows home where i have my qth located so let's just go to file uh, i'm sorry edit and preferences there will be one show up here on ground stations that is actually somewhere over here in copenhagen and you can delete it you can edit it and save it but just make sure that you have set it as default and then hit ok or yes hit ok so let's uh let's just add a new one we'll call it home 2 uh, there's no need for any kind of description unless you want to the location lets you select it from a list which if you're in areas like i am it's it's not ever on the list if you don't want to take the time to look at the latitude and longitude just put um uh, I'm going to make up a, a grid square, echo might 6, 3, delta, delta. And we will come down here to above sea level and put 100 meters above sea level and hit OK. And see it put it on there. And you would have to uncheck this one and then check this one as default hit OK now once you put the look ground station in you will have to close out and restart G predict so I'm not gonna add that one in there I'm just gonna hit cancel let's go back to edit and update the TLE data from network and this you will have to be connected to the internet all that does is it updates the Calperian data that it uses to track with uh, you can read updated satellite skip missing and new satellites 
come back to edit update transponder data a lot of times if there's a new satellite been added to the list the transponder data will not be on there until you update it you can go back to preferences ground stations message logs uh, modules your, your world map you know all of these you you, you could just um, experiment with that yourself but remember what the original was let's cancel that let's come up here to this little arrow and hit configure now I have some already added in here but let's just say we wanted to search for a o dash seven there it is right there highlight it and hit the arrow to bring it over or you can double click it and it puts it in, puts them in sequential order so highlight this one hit the left arrow to remove it from the list hit ok now it shows AO 73 coming over in an hour this is the next satellite coming over and you can see uh, a compass view I call it here and if you will look down at the bottom left here as my cursor moves through the azimuth and elevation changes a drop down list here shows the satellites uh, we'll pick AO 73 and we will drop down and show next pass here is your line by line from AOS to LOS time wise azimuth and the elevation the range and the footprint there's the polar view which is a compass view as I call it it gives you a time frame as it comes across with elevation rings here this one is a graphical representation of the azimuth and elevation your azimuth scale is on the left the elevation scale is on the right and the time is on the bottom let's close this out open the here and go to future passes and this is default I think 10 passes you can change it to however many you want to in the uh, preferences but each one listed AOS LOS the duration max elevation the AOS azimuth the LOS azimuth and so forth you can also drop this down and highlight the AO 73 title click it and it gives orbit information as well as transponder data UV linear the frequency ranges inverting and up USB there's a CW beacon PO sat BPSK 1200 baud telemetry and drifting telemetry let's just switch over to here cast 4a check it out all the orbit data transponders CW downlink the linear transponder inverting upper side band mode view is GMSK 4008 with this frequency so there's a lot of information to be had here on this very simple and free piece of software all right let's go to edit preferences interfaces here's one for radios and rotators I do not have a rotator to interface with this but I do know that I have read in some of the forums that the Satnogs rotator will work on a EasyCom communication protocol which is built into some of the dependency files that is installed with it initially uh, HamLab that does the rotator and the radios so let's just add new name we'll call it radio one 
the host would be local host or you could plug it or type in the usb port uh, rx only we'll put uh, tx no push to talk status and if you hover over it long enough it tells you some information about it on the on the pop-up window vfo i want uh, b up link a down link that's split mode and uh here's a port number and we will hit okay now you would need the correct cat interface cable for your radio this is just something that i made up i don't know if it would actually work on it i have had this controlling the transmit frequency of an yesu ft 857d in the past I believe it's a CT-62 cable, and I bought the USB version of it, and it, it works very well. Let's just uh, hit OK. Now, if you come back up to here with your radio installed, you hit Radio Control, and you select your satellite. From the list here if I can get it to click we'll say cast 4a I want to select the linear transponder I want to hit track pick my radio one and hit engage and you see the the frequency changed but it's no radio there so it disengaged it so you you, you can see that the 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 downlink and the uplink closed this out the same way if you had your and your rotator configured you could uh, track it using the antenna control too now if we go preferences interfaces and we add another radio and you have the correct cat cable whether it be the same brand whatnot it could be a, a software defined receiver rtl sdr dongles running say i think it's the gqrx on the raspberry pi this will control the frequency of the rtl sdr through a local host i believe it's 127.0.0.1 and whatever port it sets up and then you would go into the radio software and set that port of uh, that address and that port for remote control and the G predict will control the SDR receiver as well as your transmit radio so there's there's a lot of functionality in this software uh, you have a good globe layout here uh, footprints that I believe you can turn on and off the name of the satellite and I think if you get it just right, there you go, you double click on it and it brings up your orbit info and your transponder info just like it did when you highlighted the name here. So there's multiple ways to get to it. All right, everyone, that's all I have for today. I hope you got something beneficial from this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Also, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification for future videos as they come out. Thanks again for stopping by at 7-3.